I know, I know, I haven't been posting as much lately, uh, you know, it's a hectic time of year, but, you know, I'm gonna be posting some good stuff soon, I promise, um, well, I can't promise it's good, but I promise I'll be posting stuff, I just posted a video yesterday, so, hopefully this is the beginning of a new trend of posting more consistently, um, maybe a New Year's resolution or something, I don't know. Um, that out of the way, we've got some exciting stuff on our hands to talk about. This month, with great timing, the film E tu Mama Tambien was the patron chosen film for me to review. Now, uh, for the duration of this review, please pardon my American accent. Now, I don't know much about Alfonso Cuaron's history as a filmmaker. It looks like his work prior to this film was decently varied, but it seems to me that this film marked the beginning of a consistent run of critically acclaimed films, of which there are now five. I haven't seen Children of Men yet. I haven't seen Prisoner of Azkaban since I was like 11 or 12. Uh, I thought Gravity was a technically incredible, but not incredibly emotionally engaging film, and I was blown away by Roma, whose relevance makes this review all the more exciting, because out of all the films I just mentioned, Roma and Itu Mama Tambien are the most thematically linked. Going into this film, I had heard two things. One, there's just a shit ton of graphic sex, and two, there's a shot of someone coming into a swimming pool. And, and both I found to be alarmingly accurate claims. Now if you read the synopsis, which you really probably shouldn't do if you're able to not do that, uh, this film sounds really corny and superficial. In Mexico, two teenage boys and an attractive older woman embark on a road trip and learn a thing or two about life, friendship, sex, and each other. Aside from the Americanized specification that it takes place in Mexico, all the stuff they learn about sounds cheesy, but you have to understand that this movie is really two movies or more specifically, one movie hiding behind another movie. The first movie is what IMDb describes, and as bad as it makes it sound, you have to commend the film for presenting these fleshed out characters that feel so grounded and authentic. It's one of those movies where the acting doesn't feel like acting at all, it just feels like a bunch of people hanging out and enjoying each other's company, but they're still given a decent amount of depth between their home and family life and their relationships with each other. Even Hano, who has like five minutes of screen time, makes such an impression in those five minutes and through later exposition is contextualized so much that he's still a lingering presence throughout the whole film. And they each have something of an arc. Luisa coming to terms with mortality and seeing what the world has to offer, and Julio and Tenoch working through the issues in their own friendship, and what may be more than just platonic friendship. I was watching the first act and I was like, okay, these, these guys are gay, right? I mean, I don't know what kind of platonic bond the film may have been trying to portray, but there was a lot of sexuality while they were in close proximity. I later abandoned the idea, but in the final act, my suspicions were confirmed. And that dynamic makes their bickering in the second act make a lot more sense. The bond between all three of them is so incredibly powerful, especially considering how brief that bond is. It's one drunken evening together, and then the next day they're almost disgusted. They part ways with Luisa, and soon they part ways with each other for good and it's kind of heart-wrenching. I just wanted to sit in the car with them forever. So that's the first movie, and then there's the second movie, which hides behind this tale of three friends and their fun little trip to the beach, and that's about the pessimistic state of things in Mexico. And not just Mexico City, which Roma later elaborated on, but Mexico as a whole. Each beat in the narrative about the friends and their beach trip has some unacknowledged beat in Mexico's narrative. This scene is about Julio borrowing the car from his sister, but what it's really about is the political activism in Mexico City, what people are protesting, but of course the film doesn't acknowledge that. This scene is about Julio and Tenoch meeting Luisa, but again, it's about the political state of Mexico, the ruling party, and that power dynamic. This scene is about striking the campsite, but it's really about the pigs that got loose who will soon be slaughtered. This scene is about two friends and potential lovers who will never meet again, but it's really about how the state of things are driving people apart. There are so many instances of this where something might be mentioned, but it's really not emphasized, like Chewie and his family moving away and never fishing again. And it's never really acknowledged because for these characters, that's the world they live in. And these characters are so grounded in reality. That is the backdrop for so many people alive in the real world, seeing their issues play out on screen. The production of this film is incredibly loose and energetic, I got heavy French New Wave vibes from it. Most specifically, it reminded me a lot of My Night at Mods, which has a lot of similar visual and thematic ideas as well as character dynamics. Emmanuel Lubetsky shot the film, so it's no surprise it looks great and has long one takes. Ultimately, while there's a lot of criticism and a lot of material to chew on that is pessimistic about Mexico, the style and the energy and the locations and mise-en-scene 
are beautiful, which culminate into this really complex love-hate dynamic which I think most people feel about the places they live and the people they care about. And that's what this film is really about. And it's so fascinating to see Cuaron almost 20 years later, taking what he learned making this film, drawing from the same pool of inspiration, and making Roma, which is entirely its own beast. Narrowing down on Mexico City, of course, we see a lot of self-influence here. The riots, the protesting, the thoughtful staring out of a car window, the spiritual cleanse of walking down to the ocean. Both films even use exclusively diegetic music. We can so clearly see him plucking the same fruit and using it as an ingredient in a totally different dish. The slow, reflective editing, the cold black and white, the almost objective viewpoint Roma has, whereas in this film we've got this fast-paced, energetic editing, this warm, warm color scheme, and the camera treating us like we're sitting in the room with these people and interacting with them. As far as criticisms of E2 Mama Tambien, I, I really can't think of much, which is embarrassing, but... I don't know what to tell you. I, I really love this movie. Sometimes the dialogue sounded more like movie banter than actual conversational dialogue, but that was rarely the case. I don't know. I'm stumped. I'm gonna give this movie a 9 just because I didn't feel the, the punch that a 10 might give me, but most of the movies I now give a 10 were not initially a 10 and grew on me over time, and I can very, very easily see this becoming a 10, so we'll see how that goes. While I didn't absolutely love Gravity, haven't seen Children of Men, and don't remember much of Prisoner of Azkaban, looking at these two films, I'm really beginning to understand who Alfonso Cuaron is as an artist, and it's really exciting to be able to understand someone through their art like that. I've seen maybe one promo of him promoting Roma and like his Oscar speech, but I've seen very little footage of the actual person himself, and yet I feel so connected to him through these two movies alone. I'm really glad this film was recommended to me. I don't know when I would have gotten around to it otherwise. Um, if you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out, although if you've made it to this point in the video, I'd hope you'd have seen it already. I know this was a pretty short review, but again, I've got a lot of stuff coming in, in January, hopefully. Um, and thanks for watching this, of course. Um, my social media, and more importantly, my Patreon, are linked in the description. Um, uh, I was gonna say have a nice day, but seeing as how it's New Year's Eve, have have a have a fun night but you know stay safe out there and i'll see you in the new year